Hello everyone, welcome back for another book review. If you didn't know, the start of Mercury Retrograde just began not too long ago, and I am definitely noticing. <laughs> I have been trying to record this particular video for a while, and technology just keeps failing me, so here's to hoping it's gonna work this time, because I don't know how many more times I can introduce this book, so just remember, it's Mercury Retrograde. We're just not judging technology and the ability for it to work today. So this is Inner Witch, and it, the premise of this is all over the place. <laughs> the way I would describe this in a quick synopsis here at the beginning is this is a trendy witch book aimed at women at, like, their 20-year-old year. year. <laughs> like, you aren't really an adult yet, you're barely out of high school, probably even still in your late years of high school, honestly, and uh, it's it's mostly for them in a very trendy witch way, and uh, yeah, I've got way more notes, so let's jump into the specifics. Right, so to kick things off, I didn't get very far before I had a point that I had to write down, <laughs> so this book is very woman-centric, and personally, I'm not a big fan of that. Now, I wouldn't say I'm non-binary by any means, but I do really struggle mentally with the concept of, like, the masculine and the feminine and all of that. And so in my witchcraft, I don't like to include a lot of gendering things, and in particular, to really exclude, like, half the human population, if not more, if we're going to include, like, the gender spectrum. Not everyone identifies as one or the other completely, there's huge, like, in between <laughs> the two nowadays, and I'm sure there's, like, specific terms other than non-binary. At this point, I think there is a bit of a spectrum within them, but I don't know a lot about that, so I'm not going to talk on that too much, but just as a mention, I don't know, but I personally, when I sit down to read a witchcraft book, I don't want to feel <laughs> the exclusion. Now, I'm not a man. I don't identify as a man. I don't identify as anything in between very much a woman but it bothers me when a book only references women and like in a very in your face way about it and that is this book because most of the time when you are reading a witchcraft book it is you and the author it's two people involved you can just refer to the reader as you <laughs> like you don't need to attach a gender and when authors tie a gender I feel like it takes away from the book because if you're going to refer to, like, a collection of people, just refer as a collection, as in a whole. It doesn't need to be gendered specific. And I know it's a really popular thing in witchcraft. It's one of the things that annoys me. And this book, it's very woman-centric. So if you're a dude, you're probably not going to like this unless you can really get over that fact. And as a woman, it bothered me. I can't even imagine what your experience is going to be like. And with that, it's also how the author writes, <laughs> because it is written like a teenager. And, like, I don't say that, like, condescendingly, per se. I mean, I am a little bit, because, like, there was an editor involved, there's a publishing house involved. Again, if it was self-published, I would not have such high standards, but you had a publishing house, you had an editor. What happened? Because <laughs> it is really written like a teenager, and just some of the lines really stuck out. I, I know I'll mention some here and there, but right off the bat, one in particular that... <sighs> it's a Beyonce quote, really. Women run the world, after all. And it's like, do we, though? Do we? Because, like, first of all, have you seen politics? Have you seen the people in charge? I don't know that we're running much. Also, like, that also still is taking away from half the population... Ish. I don't know how exactly down the line it is half and half, but I just, why? <laughs> it's so stupid. Like, we don't need to p swing the pendulum the complete other way. No one gender really runs the world. We're equally involved here. And the way it's written, I'm like 99% sure if it's not a direct quote, it's a very close quote to a Beyonce song. And I'm, I'm guessing, but I'm pretty sure it's Beyonce. I'm personally not a big fan of her. But I swear that I've heard that, you know, in passing, that it's like a song or something of like, women run the world, right? Like, I swear that's been a song. Just, I know it's just a throw out phrase 
of the book, but it annoyed me because the next one that immediately came up, like, right afterwards was, like, she didn't use this terribly often, but it did annoy me quite a bit. And I'm going to spell it for you. It's W-O slash M-A-N. Like, why? Just why? <laughs> like, there are just so many better ways to write that. And it just proved some annoyance on my part. I think it kind of added to the immaturity, teenage vibes of this book. And again, teenage into like early adulthood, not, it doesn't necessarily need to be tied to age, but definitely maturity. Now, throughout this book, the topics are scattered so haphazardly. <laughs> it felt like I was scrolling through witch talk. Like if you just typed in witch talk into TikTok, the like sheer amount of chaos between topics is how this book was organized. I don't know what the rhyme or reason was for this. It didn't feel like there was really any. It and like the way it's written too, it just felt like I was scrolling through TikTok. And that's not what I want when I sit down to read a book. And granted, I read a lot of books, so maybe I have a little higher of a judgment, but like again, I'm judging harsher because it's coming from a publishing house, there's an editor involved. Who was in charge of deciding these topics and why there was no linking <laughs> involved like it just felt so random like when you're trying to like brainstorm ideas for your book and you're like yep we're just going to keep it in that order that came up throughout the entire book and kind of with that it just the flow of this book was just off it there was a lot of words without actually saying anything and then also like introducing random concepts randomly like that was my exact like note for this part in the review was just like there's a lot of words without saying anything yet introducing random concept randomly because like there's no rhyme or reason the writing in this book is just not great potentially it could get better but I think with what the author does with their life it's not there is a difference in writing for magazines and blogs versus books it is not the same skill set and it feels like it's really and that's what she's done and it just seems like maybe we need to lean more towards that instead of books kind of going along with that with the writing style and how she words things and just the overall like trendy teen witch vibes <laughs> so i've got a quote that i pulled out from page 39 and then another one from page 60 just to give you like a little tasting of the type of writing that is this book. So the first quote goes, there are also ascended masters. They're like a spirit guide upgrade. They've fully broken free from the cycle of karma and death and rebirth, so they really know what's up. Then the other quote comes from page 60, which is, winter is coming, but really. And I know, I know, these are really just random, but that kind of verbiage <laughs> is the entire book. I could have picked just about any page. Those were two in particular that it was like, this is a really good example of this writing. Like, it just reads how teenagers talk. <laughs> like, it it's so much slang. And how you talk versus how you should write are very different. Spoken language versus written language are different. And it just, it shows. And I don't love it. I will say that potentially somebody who's like a 16 year old girl might like this book. <laughs> they might really enjoy that type of writing. Again, I'm on the closer age to 30. So like, and I read a lot of books. <laughs> and so I have a higher standard of what I want from my books. And potentially, you know, a young girl, like again, like 16 to like maybe 21, they might really like connect with the style of writing and the verbiage. They might really like it. I don't know. And really I should be saying her, but even then, see, like I try and use gender neutral because you don't know who is going to be picking up a book. Like, and it is very, again, woman fo focused. So just be aware. It's not for really men. It's for women. And uh, this is the kind of writing that you're getting into. Well, for the formatting of this book, it's something that I mentioned in a review semi-recently, which was like modern Wicca, I think, and it's the formatting. <laughs> so it is the like left orientation where the edges of the text are just this jiggity-jaggity awkward 
I don't know why a publishing house would approve this. It just feels unfinished. I kind of cut some slack if it was self-published. You might not know that it's a publishing standard. Because again, I, that's what I went to college for. And so like, I remember that was like drilled into you. Like that's how you're, it's supposed to be formatted. And so like, I don't know why the publishing house was like, eh, why would we do that? It just feels really lazy. On top of the writing and everything, it just, it's a random little thing, I know. But again, it's the it's little things that make up a book, right? So that's just one of the other things that to me was a standout of like, not well written, not well educated. Because again, it's the little things that add up. Now, this publishing house is like an offshoot of Penguin Publishing. And typically, at least the books that I've experienced from them are very like teen girl, like early teenage girlhood. And uh, so I am assuming it's probably that same level. But even then, like those books, like the fiction books I've read are formatted properly. So I don't know what's going on because like the formatting isn't really on the author. The writing, the words, yup. The formatting is more of a judgment on the publishing house and the editor. Because, like, again, if it was self-published, you might not know these things. But you're in business to do this. And you're from, again, like a parent company of Penguin, which is a big publishing house. What happened? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Now, as I was reading through this, at the time that I had read it, because it's been, like, a week, because chaos of life, and trying to get this to actually work, so... In the mixed, <laughs> I read around the time that I read this, I read Traditional Wicca by Thorn Mooney. And in that book, she talked about how like eclectic Wicca kind of gets this reputation. And like, you know, you want to sit there like high and mighty, like, <laughs> we're fine. It's whatever, like, stop judging us traditionalists. But then you read a book like this, and you're like, you know what, you have some you have some points, though. Because for all of the traditional Wiccans and witches out there that are in an established coven, you have to work your butt off to get involved in them. You have to make your rank through like the outer circle to get into the inner circle to start your initiation process and all of that stuff. Like, I can see a little bit why that has some merit over a book like this. This just felt like all of their judgments is manifested into this book <laughs> where you're like oh my god okay yep that's where the stereotype comes from it's not like a horrible book but again it it's the thing is like it just it reads like somebody who's like early early 20s that is just trying to fill in the space of like the experienced people of like 30 plus year olds and it's just trying to show that they're they're in the same ranking they know the same stuff they've had these experiences and they you know don't and it's just this, it's weird as you're aging and you can look back and you can see like the well-written books versus the not well-written books. And this just feels like the author just needs to grow and experience and like just, it takes time <laughs> really to get that skill, maybe take some college courses, like go and experience the world a little bit, get better at your writing so it doesn't sound like your age. And again, because it, it really is written like, it feels like when you were like in high school trying to write your stuff for college and you're like trying to sound really smart and really intelligent and really above where you are and like you can see right through it as an adult <laughs> and you're like oh you're trying so hard <laughs> like and it sounds so condescending I know but that's like the only way I can describe it is that way so I'm, I'm just rambling at that point but I it's it just constantly kept coming up of how much she's trying to like sound like she's so well written and so experienced and knows all of this stuff and it feels like she's been like a practitioner for like two years from like 17 to 19 and decided to start blogging and writing this book. I also want to mention that of the experience of the author <laughs> because some of the stuff was pretty cringe and one in particular like Again, it's a weird line of like cultural appreciation and appropriation as like witchcraft has just certain things that have just become like fundamental to it really that come from other cultures. One of those is the chakra system. Now, that type of like belief exists in a few different cultures, but typically we refer to the like Hindu chakra system. I'm pretty sure it was Hindu. I'm like 99% confident Hindu. And... 
I know for a fact <laughs> that this book includes one that to me just feels like a mockery of it and is just again proof that the author is just young and like it it's just something that comes with age and experience and it's like you're gonna look back and cringe I hope because like about mid book or so she has she's talking about the chakras right we have the fashion chakra and it's like need I say more onto why <laughs> this book is very trendy which written again by like a teenager early early 20s who hasn't had a lot of life experience and it just it feels so disgraceful to call something a chakra related to fashion because I mean first of all any of the chakras could be related to fashion if you wanted to I'm pretty sure Kellyanne has talked about that to some degree because I would consider her a fashion witch she loves fashion that's one of her like major things she loves and incorporates into her daily life but I don't think she would ever consider calling it a fashion chakra just stuff like that that it just it reads very awful to me and like the next quote that I've got written down too it's just awful <laughs> so it's on page 144 I also wear a lot of pink when the moon is in a water sign read tender-hearted and emo as fuck well actually it's af but still and it's like no this is just so bad <laughs> like again this writing it just is so so cringy all the time the last section that i took some notes on was the archetypes of fashion and like i was getting really done with this book at this point and it was like wow i my note is like about ready to just burn this book <laughs> like it was giving off the same vibes as the basic witches book that i talked about last year it is just it's so bad like my note literally says legitimately just caught myself in the deepest frown from this section because it was just so cringe so horrible it was this and if you haven't watched my basic witches book it, it was a bad book <laughs> it's telling you like the shape of your nails will scare away men and it was just so stupid and it was this book was like detouring right down the same path it was pretty bad it wasn't quite as bad as that one but it was pretty bad because again we have a chakra that's for fashion and the archetypes of fashion were like so random coming back to the beginning we have beyonce listed we have stevie nicks and then like a couple goddesses it was just so cringe and it's just like no you a should never be worshiping a person that's kind of iffy and especially when they're alive that's kind of weird and it's fine to get inspiration from them but for this kind of a book it was like what are you doing it's supposed to be a modern guide to the ancient craft and it's like you're telling us to worship Beyonce. Really? Wow. <laughs> like, again, the basic premise of this book is it is a trendy witch book. I would say hard pass if you're actually interested in witchcraft and Wicca and New Age pagan stuff. This is not the book for you. Again, I really only think it's aimed at, like, teen girls who want to be like, Ooh, I'm so powerful. I'm a witch. And are, like, the same generation but different years of those who got introduced to like the craft or uh like sabrina actually even now there's a new sabrina that are like i'm gonna be a witch and this is like their guidebook into like well it's like kind of like that but like not really but like here you go trendy witch hard pass i just don't recommend it so anyways this was quite rambly i would love to know your thoughts on this one in the comments down below Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting pretty much every day till the end of the year. And then every day, hopefully, in the new year as well. So make sure to also check out my Patreon. A huge thanks to my peeps over there. Have a bunch of content going up there for the rest of the year too. So if you want to check out even more stuff from me, it's usually pretty more consistent over there, <laughs> to say the least. If I don't post here, I'm usually over on Patreon because their content usually is scheduled well in advance. So... Anyways, thank you to those peeps as well, and until next time, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all soon. Blessed be.